Hello everybody, my name is Devin with HDPiano.com and in today's lesson I'll be showing you guys how to play Vienna by the Frey. In this video, the first of six, I'll be showing you the intro and a bit of the verse. It sounds like this. One, two, three. Alright, we'll be getting through that much in this video, but you can find the rest of the videos with the rest of the song, as well as a whole song performance over at hdpiano.com, so I hope you can join me there after this if you're not there already. Alright, before I dive in, just a quick question. Uh, I don't know exactly where the fray is from, but I would venture to guess they're not from Austria, so Vienna is pretty far to travel. And I'm curious, what is the furthest that you have traveled? So comment below with the furthest you've traveled and why. I think for me, it would be Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. I was there about four, uh, about four, five years ago now uh, for a gig, and it was awesome. Okay, hope to see your uh, answers in the comments down there, and let's get started. We're in the key of E flat major. All right, so I recommend always being familiar with the scale of the key of the song that you're learning. So E flat major, we're looking out for E flat, A flat, B flat. Those are our flats three flats. All right, so most of the chords are going to fall into those seven notes. So let's dive in. One other thing to point out before we go is that we're in three, four instead of four, four. So it's kind of like a waltz. We feel it as one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, let's get started. So A flat major seven. What we have going on in the intro is basically a combination of a few things. We've got a bass note in the left, and that will always be one note for the most part. We've got this ostinato thing, and it's played pretty loudly, and then we have this very soft kind of like pair of notes as a pad. And those are gonna be consistently an A flat and a B flat below middle C, which is right here. Okay? So we hit our first chord, A flat major seven. We've got our, our let's call it the pad, and we've got our bass note. And then we're gonna add the ostinato, which is a G. So just try that. There's no tempo yet. All right, we're going to hit each one three times. Now the next one is B flat. So B flat in the bass, and our ostinato moves to F. Our pad stays the same. Okay, now we're going to bring the bass up and the ostinato down one more time. So we get C and E flat. All right, so those are the three chords of the intro. along with me. All right, so there's two bars of that A flat over C chord, uh, but just one bar of the other two chords. Let's add a little rhythm. So the ostinato is consistently falling on upbeats, meaning one and, two and, three and. So we hit the downbeat with our pad and our bass note, and then we play the ostinato on the upbeats. So check it out. Two, three, one and, two and, three and. So I essentially repeated it there a second time, and then rather than two bars of, of that chord, A flat over C, we go to an E flat major chord, and we play a G in the right, and then fill out the remaining eighth notes with the left hand. So G, B flat, E flat, B flat, G, B flat. And that's one and two and three and at full speed. And you'll be able to pick up on a few kind of like uh, changes in the bass line, um, just subtle uh, re-articulations of certain notes. I'm not going to go over those verbatim uh, because it kind of gets to the, the uh, what is it, like the core style of this piece, that this isn't the type of thing you need to read note for note. This is, uh, you know, this is kind of pattern-based. It's based on habits. It's based on your own personal style and voice. So, you know, as you're getting familiar with these chords, you can pick up what I'm doing, um, or you can, you know, allow your fingers to kind of do their own thing as long as it's, you know, 
within the chord. So, you know, you could be like... I mean, that was a total exaggeration. I thought that sounded pretty messy and annoying. Point being, though, it still is communicating the same kind of like musical feeling. So don't feel like you have to learn this literally note for note. Okay, first eight measures look like this, nice and slow. Two, three. So we added four bars of more or less the same thing. We stop our ostinato one note short so we can shift up to the verse territory. All right, so our verse starts on E flat major. And we've got this similar kind of feeling. And it's kind of a classic feeling for an odd metered kind of like rock song. Um, uh, I think this will compare very well to Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls, which uh, we have a lesson for coming soon if it's not out yet um and it's this kind of just sense of there being a continuous drone so it's felt in this you know uh, meter based in three and you know i'm just improvising right now but the idea is this isn't a literal transcription i mean this is actually but you know, you don't have to learn it literally. You can put your own spin on it as long as you kind of maintain that feeling of this kind of just ever, ever moving, lilting kind of drone thing. So check it out in the verse. This is how it manifests. All right, so most of the motion now is in our left hand. Right hand is you know, very basic. We've got G, F. A flat, F, G, E flat, and then we land on C and B flat. So the left hand, our first chord is E flat major, so we have E flat and B flat, and we go one and two and three and. Let's try that. One and two and three and. Now we're going to take our outer notes down a step in the scale, and this gives us B flat major over uh, D. So that's D and B flat in the left with F in the right. Same pattern. Now our next chord, we take uh, our left hand up to F, the bottom note, and our right hand to A flat. And we're going to add a high F in the right hand. So one and two and three and four. Uh, one, rather. <laughs> All right, so that's our third measure. And we, we land on C minor, C minor seven. G in the right, and we're going between C and B flat in the left. We hit an E flat with the right on the end of two. And then we land on our A flat add nine voicing here. So one more time. And we hold the left on A flat, and our right hand just kind of pedals um, a couple different options for this chord here. We have C and B flat to E flat and B flat. Um, and then occasionally we'll see a D as well. So it looks like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and two, and three. And that's A flat over B flat. C, E flat in the right, with B flat in the left. Now the verse will continue. Uh, whoops. much of the same stuff, um, but I'm going to continue on with this verse in a later video. What I want to talk about now is just those chords and kind of go over, you know, like I've been talking about intermittently here, is like, you know, establishing your own feel, your own style, your own approach, so you don't feel like you're bound to the page or to this, you know, transcription. Um, so our chords are E flat, B flat over D, and then this kind of like F minor 11. So here's F minor. B flat would be the 11. So F, B flat, and A flat, and then C minor 7 to A flat major 9. I 
but just real quick want to kind of riff on that and show you that you know that ostinato can be moved to a different hand you could play it in your right The idea is those four measures of the verse um, are very active, and then we get to this A flat chord, and suddenly it kind of chills out. It's a little more pensive. So the idea is you just want to kind of replicate that emotion if you want to do your own thing. So I hope you see what I'm getting at here. Um, just using those same chords, you can add that style and do your own thing. And I totally encourage that with a song like this because I'm sure it was not performed with the intention of being performed the same way every time. Okay, well, what I'm going to do here now is just play from the intro to about halfway through that verse, um, play you guys out, and then see you over at hdpiano.com to learn the rest. So nice and slow, here we go from the top. One, two, three. All right. One other point I want to make is that there's a lot of dynamics in this style of piano playing. So it's not, right? It's not even. It's very much like bring out the ostinato and, and quiet down those outer notes. So. Right? See, it's like if you randomly choose notes to kind of make those pop um, that's what makes the piano part so interesting otherwise it's just kind of like the same stuff over and over so just wanted to point that out all right guys that's all i've got for you in this video my name is devin with hdpiano.com i'm looking forward to teaching the rest to you guys and uh, while i have you here please like and subscribe on youtube and follow us across social media so you can know what's coming next we'll talk to you soon <laughs>